We just watched House of the Dragon, episode 5. Thoughts? 9 out of 10. Easily a 9 out of 10. It, 9.5 out of 10. It, it, it was so good. It, it, it was so good. I was like, 9 out of 10? No, that's a 9.5. So good. I, if you've seen it, we don't even need to explain. So let's just start talking about it. All right. So this episode uh, starts off from where the last one ended with um, the the king going to propose the marriage of Sir Lenor and Rhaenyra. So that is Corlys' son um, of House Driftmark. Uh, no, of House, House Valarion, Valarion, who lives in Driftmark. And they're supposed to get married for a political move to unite the houses and to, you know, it's like they're old Valyrian blood so it's just a big power play and yeah so they're going to get married what happens next Rylan? lots of things um i mean corliss wants to know like whose whose name is gonna be the one on the throne and they decide valarian is going to be the name of the heirs until they ascend to the throne which is kind of interesting so there'll be like a two-name family so it's like the the heir direct heir will be a targaryen and anyone else will be a Valarian. So it'd be like when they say you're the heir to the Targaryen name, because they legitimately have to change their name. Mm-hmm. Supposedly, if they have heirs. Yeah, um, but you know what? I want to jump right into the meat of the episode, which was the wedding welcome feast. There is so much scheming that went on between. Just all these different characters, all these like alliances being formed without anything being said. It was just like it was mostly subtle, except for for there's one part where they mention, oh, like uh, Queen Allison shows up in green, um, in a super huge power play where she wasn't um at the table, and then uh, Viserys is making his speech, and she shows up to like make a statement of the queen is here. And, you know, like, I kind of, she kind of does what she wants, right? Like, she's in, in, like, in control of herself. Yeah, it's like, I'm the queen, and until anyone says otherwise, I'm in control of what I get to do. And when I show up, I show up. Yeah. And she shows up in green, and there's a brief conversation between two members of Old Town, or is they... Uh, House Hightower from Old Town. Yeah, they discuss, oh, you do you know what uh, the green symbolizer, what the colors of war are in old town green Green. so then immediately like once you know that said or if you just picked up on the subtle cues of something is up Mm -hmm. um yeah that kicks off a huge kerfuffle at the wedding because and it's like there's a lot of tension in this scene because everyone who knows what's happening with the queen and you know her intentions are just they're staring and they're just waiting for that to kick off and the the conversation between Allison and her uncle is like, oh man, that's where I was like, oh my god, that's it's about when, yeah, to pop off. I think I mentioned to you earlier in the episode, I'm like, are they starting to, like set up? This was before like the she showed up to the wedding, like early in the so episode. For context, they started to... um, Austin, you don't know anything about how the plot's gonna go. No, I haven't looked up anything. I haven't read any of the books uh, or any of the um, Fire and Blood book. I don't know anything about that. So. I started to notice, like, are they starting to, you know, I think it was with Otto, when Otto started to talk about, you know, if, if you don't do something, she's going to kill Aegon and your children, regardless of whatever you guys have in place, because that is just how it's going to work. And I start, I think I turned to you while I was playing, I was like, are they setting up, like, a civil war, like, you got to make a move before she makes her move kind of thing? And you didn't say anything, but you were like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> like, you just leaned back into the couch. And then, yeah, right at the end of the episode, or closer to the end of the episode, it's like, when she talks to the uncle, oh, it's going down. Yeah, when he said, uh, you have the support of House Hightower. And of all of Old Town. And of Old Town. I was like, oh, oh, they're serious. Mm-hmm. Because they see it, like, the high towers see it as, like, this is my family that could become, like, kings of the Iron Throne for generations to come. They Like, my bloodline will be royalty. Like, the game is on the line. We gotta do this one play or else we're gonna lose. Yeah. And 
what I thought too was interesting was Allison was like called Rainier a stepdaughter for the first time on screen that we've ever cold. seen. Cold blooded. Ice cold. And what I noticed too is she stopped picking at her fingers. So she's obviously like anxiety nervous and anxious but like she's in control now whereas before she was not in control and now she's like i'm making these choices myself and it's like oh but then the biggest choice that was made was by Kristen cole okay i want to stop right there because there's a lot of moving parts at the wedding okay and i, okay, I kind of yeah. want to go back to the beginning of the episode because there's like three distinct things that happened this Four distinct things that are happening this episode, okay? With with the characters. We have Damon killing his lady wife. In a brutal way. Just, I thought that was so, like, it's not the most brutal we've I'm, seen. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm like, I'm glad they didn't show it. <laughs> like, that they alluded to it. Yeah. Rather than showing it on screen. Because that was, like, brains bashed in brutal. Yeah. So, yeah, he makes his move and rids himself of his lady wife. Um, so we got Damon doing that. Then we got the King story with like his family where Rhaenyra is going to be wed. However, he is deathly sick at this point. All of the infection and everything from that Iron Throne is killing him. And, uh, as the episode goes on, uh, we were just like, I don't, I think this is the episode where he's done. Like at the beginning of the episode, I'm like, ah, he's going to die next episode. And then he kept, like, fainting and showing signs of sickness. I'm like, I don't even know if he's going to make it to the end. Like, he could fall over at any moment. Uh, you and I were joking that when he's doing his speech that he would just hit the table, hit the ground, and then that would be it. And then it would, like, kick off some crazy stuff at the wedding. However, the well, craziest thing... Well, I just want to say th- real quick, when he got off his cart on his way, when he got back to King's Landing, I was in the middle of saying, is he about to die as he just dropped... You know, he obviously didn't die then, but... Um, yeah, so then I think at the end of the episode is when he kicks it, right? Well, we assume he kicks it for good, but that's like the fourth time he's fainted, so I don't know. He He's holding on. I would be on. absolutely shocked <laughs> if he's breathing in the next episode. I think we're going to see a king's funeral in Might the next episode. Might open with the funeral, actually. Yeah. Um, and then the another very important plot line is Kirsten Cole. Yeah. So, as uh, Rhaenyra and her cousin Lenor um, are, you know, becoming acquainted, um, it comes out that Lenor is gay, and that you know he's fine with the marriage in general, but the the aspect of having to like be with Rhaenyra, um, he's like, well, how's that going to work? Like, so they make an agreement. She could see whoever, and he could see. Uh, his guy or whatnot. Yeah, in in his case, it was uh, Sir Joffrey Lawnmouth, the uh, Knight of Kisses or something like that. Uh, that's what he called himself, but he said, I don't know why. But anyways, that's his guy. Okay, so yeah, uh, there, that's the situation. So she uh, is like, yeah, sounds great. You know, they're both like, that's an agreement. We get back to the boat. Kirsten Cole is he makes like a pretty bold move. Like he's already uh, desecrated his um, his vow or oath to the king's guard, so he makes like a last ditch effort, kind of, to be like, well, he doesn't want to die. Clearly, he doesn't want to become a eunuch. Clearly, um, so he is like, Renair, we gotta run away. <laughs> like we gotta pack everything up. You can come with me. Like we, we'll I've, get married. I've heard you we'll live happily the, ever yeah, after. Yeah, like she's complained over the years to him. Like, oh, the throne. Oh, this. Oh, that. Um, so he's like, we could just go away. And then she's like, cold, pretty cold about it. Like, yes and no. She's like, I'm not committed to you, but I still, you know, wanna, you know. Yeah, like we could get down, <laughs> like that kind of thing. And then, um. I like how he stood up for himself there, where it was like, I'm not just going to be your plaything. Um, but mm-hmm. then it put him in a tough position because uh, if, you know, him not going along with it, like there's going to be a little bit of um, friction there. It puts him in a really bad spot, which is what we talked about last episode, where he didn't like, yes, he had a choice when Rainier like invited him into her bedchambers, 
But at the same time, he didn't really because the power dynamic and now that unfolded in this episode where it's like everything's coming apart because of it. Yeah. And then Allison yeah. summons him to her chambers. Oh, and this made me so uncomfortable. She's going on about like, man, did you ever see Rhaenyra like oh, she's alluding like so hard to like. Well, and, has Rhaenyra been with anyone? And the way I thought about that was like, Allison is kind of uncomfortable with all that, that talk, you know? So she wasn't being sneaky or anything. She just lucked into a confession by Kristen where he's like, I did it. I'm the one you want. <laughs> and, oh my God. But she doesn't do anything about it. She says, oh, you can go. And I said, I said, ah, she's putting an ace up her sleeve. Like, yeah, putting that card right in the pocket, holding on to it for later. Yeah, yeah, she's got, she's going to use that to her advantage sometime soon. And so we go back to the wedding where you were talking about the one of the more crazy, like above and beyond the civil war that's brewing or the rift that's occurring. Kristen Cole just straight up starts murking um, Joffrey. Joffrey Lawnmouth. Yeah, in like it started, I don't know if people will notice that he's the one who started it because it seemed like. Everyone was just kind of dancing and like in a group. Oh, I know. What, I see what you mean. Like out of everyone involved, no one's going to know who started the fight. And because only there's one survivor. And he's the king's guard. He might he might be able to defend himself somehow. Like deflected as I saw him trying to do whatever. Like, and and Allison challenge. might support that because then she's got her own motives and he'll be extra loyal to her. I didn't even think about yeah, that. He switched, he's on like he has to be on Team Allison because now she's like you know before it's like Rhaenyra is the one who has him tied up because like if he says anything well like she's going to be like he did it <laughs> murk him but now he has to be loyal to Allison because she's the one who truly knows like yeah she, uh, because she's it's a uh, it's different when it's between the two people who did the act but now there's a third party so like it could have been like a he says she said but now it's no he told someone else mm -hmm. and now. It's a bigger thing. And so what I was alluding to earlier with Kristen's decision is there's all this political maneuvering going on. And then Kristen's just all up in his feelings and murk someone. Mm -hmm. Just boom, like that. And, oh, it wasn't pretty. No, oh. they, did, they didn't spare any details. They got their gelatin ready. They're like brains. Yeah, We're putting put it out more, there. put more. Yeah. And uh, shout out to, I don't know his first name, but Lionel Strong's little henchman that he sends in there to save Rhaenyra. The oh, guy who the puts Rhaenyra nod, yeah. on his shoulder. He just goes in there and starts busting heads. Guy had a mission. Yeah. Dude, dude's like, he, he's a fighter, man. I respect to that guy. So my initial thoughts before you pointed out like what was going on, because at, I was still having like thinking about the Civil War aspect. When the Hand of the King nodded to him, I, I thought maybe... It was like the hand of the king was conspiring to like uh, usurp someone. So I thought like he was head nodding to go kill someone in the chaos in the, in the wedding party. Yeah, yeah, could have been, but I don't know. I've I always gotten the vibe that Lionel Strong, the new hand of the king, was like loyal to the throne. You know, trying to keep the peace as best as he can. Whereas Otto was kind of making his own plays within yeah, his role. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, but man, the plot was so thick in this episode. Even before Kristen goes off, we were so tense. We're like, oh my God, so much is happening. Like Damon is about to kiss Rhaenyra in the middle of everything. And we're like, with, with everyone present, like it's, it's one thing for them to like do the whole sneak off into the city and stuff. Like those are episode. rumors, right? Yeah. But if every royal family in Westeros sees them just macking in the middle of a royal wedding, like, oh my God. God. And then the king, Viserys, saw that, which, like, confirmed what he didn't believe, but um, he's now so, dead, so yeah, it doesn't even matter. That reminds me of something we didn't touch on, which was our um, theories and suspicions of how the maester, like, came to know, to give the potion, the, the tea or whatever, to Rhaenyra, the cleansing tea. It comes out that it was sent he was sent by the king so the king never believed that Rhaenyra was innocent in something in like the having like sex or whatnot but um he just wasn't able to confirm or deny who it was with 
I don't know. I or still don't think, trust. I still don't trust that maester. You as think far the maester is like acting on his own, and the buddy who is telling the story to Allison? Oh, he's got his own motives for sure. Buddy with the cane? Yeah, I don't trust him at all. Then that's the guy with the cane is um the hand of the king's son, son or brother. I'm not sure which one. Okay. Uh, we'll have to look into that and see where he politically aligns. But the maester, you know, like his his um his servant there or whatever who was helping him with viscerous during the leeching was like here i've got something that might work better and the grand maester melos was just like nah we're not using the thing that possibly could save the king like it's like he just like he's he's either super incompetent or he's just got his own motives to get rid of the king and we just haven't seen them yet because he was in conversation with otto hightower in a previous episode about aegon like for he has no business in like who mates with who and who gets married right he he's just in charge of like the healing and everything yeah else. he's an advisor to the king at most yeah you know, same as however he was somewhat overstepping in those scenes where he would give his opinion on who should be with what yeah i i, I just don't trust the maester and you know what i think i've told you this before but the citadel where the maester study it's in old town where the high towers are from. Oh, okay. I, you know what? I could be convinced that he is, he's working his own game here or that he's in cahoots with like, not necessarily with Allison, but you know, aligning himself with the old town folks. Yeah. I just, I really don't trust him. And, uh, there's a theory that goes back into the a song of ice and fire early days called the, uh, the grand maester conspiracy. Which, uh, for those of you who know, you know. I won't explain it here, because obviously, Austin, you're here, and I don't want to spoil anything. But that's what I'm thinking about. That's what's on my mind. Okay. That's interesting. You know, just the name alone makes me be like, okay, maybe there's something else that could be going on like later in, in the se- like series with the Maesters. Um, but I, I think like if, if what you're talking about will end up being true, that I don't think it will be... Um, like so uh on like the front end it'll be no, like it won't be behind the scenes kind of yeah. like if you pick up on it you pick up on it that'd be cool <sighs> this episode was absolutely w- one thing we haven't talked about the the royce family um runestone the people who rule runestone uh so the wife of yeah the Damon. lady wife of Damon. As soon as basically the king did nothing to support him and Damon just like dismissed it, I was like, ooh, he's going to align himself with whoever's against Damon. In Which will probably end up being come. the queen. Probably. So that's like what I told you is if you're not making friends, you're making enemies. Mm-hmm. And that's what just happened there. So it's like Damon's just being Damon, but he might have made a mistake there. Or the king might have made a mistake. Because, you know, the king was talking about when he was, like, mid-death with the leeches. He was like, well, they sing songs about me. And then Lionel Strong was saying, you know, you lived in a time of peace and that's a good thing. But it was his reign that is leading to all this madness. Like, he's letting this stuff happen. And because he's not strong enough as a ruler, he's just, he's leaving a legacy of, like, destruction behind him. Yeah, in Division. Absolutely, yeah. So it's like, oh, I'm excited for the next episode. Like, there's so much that happened, and that wedding scene was just madness. Absolute madness with the scheming and everything. Like, oh. Oh, I just... Yeah, and then the very end. Kristen's about to commit seppuku, or whatever you call it. He's about to just off himself. And then Allison, the gods would, yeah, yeah. Allison is like, "Nah, nah, you owe me something. We got work to do." <laughs> <We got laughs> it's like an Avengers do. moment. <laughs> like, if Nick Fury shows up, we got work to do. <laughs> that is straight up Nick Fury at the end. There. Yeah. Oh my goodness! So yeah, Kristen's gonna be important in the next few episodes. How long do you think he survives? Because like, I hope he makes it through the the show. Because I was no way. I, ho- I just hope so. I like I like him. I like him. He's messed up. He's made mistakes. People can come back from that. Um, <laughs> everyone he murdered second, someone everyone at a wedding. A second chance. Um, but I just think like he rounds out the like the cast, like it rounds it out. Um, you know, he doesn't 
emote a lot, but when he did this episode, it was like, oh man, like, like, it's just, I don't There's know. There's depth to his character. We watched Rings of Power and then we watched this, right? And not to compare them too much. But to compare them. But it's like, when you watch one show that's average to bad, and you watch a show that's really good with everyone, like, on point with the acting, it's like, it just stands out, it makes you go like, wow. Like, Specifically the scene on the boat. Yeah. Where he's, when, like, close to tears, and he's like, like, I soiled my name, like, my legacy is ruined, you know, I got no honor. And then Rainier is like, yeah, and I'm not going to help you. And you just felt so bad for him. Like, oh, and that's just every actor is like just killing it so far. And what I like is that they use um like old English, but it doesn't like stand out in like they're writing poetry or something, you know? Mm -hmm. It it flows naturally in the dialogue when they use those words. Like, it just, it builds the world. The language they use is building the world, Mm -hmm. which really stands out because it's like, as soon as they start talking, you're like, oh yeah, they're, this is Westeros, you know? It's not some, like, fantasy version of England or whatever, even though, you know, like you say, old English. Well, I was thinking about this when they were pulling up to Driftmark, and it's like, it's a medieval show. Like, it, the setting is, you know, what we would perceive as medieval. But they're, what they can do, it's like, they don't have to stick necessarily to, like, history. You know, like, with mm. um the thing with women being not in power and stuff. Like, it doesn't necessarily matter in Westeros, because they don't have to stick to how things were for us, our timeline, you know? Yeah. I found that kind of neat. And then also with um Lenor being gay, it's like... I, I don't know much about how they treat that in Game of Thrones, but it, I like how it wasn't, like, such a, like, big deal, necessarily. It was, like, like, Rhaenyra was just like, okay, like, you, you do, you, we'll figure it out, kind of thing. Like, they weren't trying to out him instantly and be like, oh, you're the worst person, you're the spawn of Satan, like, you can't be married, you can't become king, things like that. Yeah, and, like, how with um it being, like, an other, another world, but that setting they can like set their own rules yeah and as far as i understand it in westeros like in the a song of ice and fire series there are quite a few characters who are alluded to as being gay but it's more of like it's an open secret but it's still a secret at least as far as the nobility are concerned because marriages are heterosexual so you need to be compatible with a female in order to you know have inheritance and things like that so it's politically um advantageous to be straight so anyone who's gay is like closeted basically but openly so in most cases unless that's just me thinking like the fans know so then the characters in the book series know um i yeah i just meant to like bring this up because i just like to see how it's like they're writing their own world yeah and like they don't have to be within the confines of like how things play out in our world and then also with the locations it's like they look like a, they look like something you would see wh- where we live, like like in on Earth, but it's so different that it's like you're not thinking, oh, that's Scotland or Ireland or yeah. you know. The uh, only England. scene that I thought was close to that was the one in the the veil vale there at the beginning with mm, um, on the hills. Yeah, where it's like because there wasn't any architecture accompanying that those shots, it was like if you knew that location or you were familiar with that area you could probably point it out it might take you out of it a little bit but as soon as like the castles come into play then it's like you know the architecture can be different enough or there's you know the flags and the sigils covering everything where it's it's different enough yeah and it doesn't look fake like it's like suit you're you're in westeros like you're in the world i really just like the feeling of the show a lot too and then i want to get into what do you think is happening next episode. I can't... I can't predict nothing in this show. Like, we had a wedding, and I'm like, oh, they're gonna get married. And then Kristen Cole just murks somebody. Okay, you know what's funny? You know what's funny about that is, uh, I was telling you... I don't know if we recorded this part, but I was probably telling you um, off-camera, like, oh, next episode when they do the wedding, it's gonna be like the red wedding. Some crazy stuff's about to go down. You're like, no way! Like, you... There's no way, because the Red Wedding is, like, a t- completely different scale. Like, a bunch of people died, right? 
But uh, I was like, I don't know. Like, they're going to have to do something to, you know, make their mark. And this episode did it. Like, it, like, it, it did not that many deaths, but it was, it stood out, like. Oh, it was impactful. And it was yeah. impactful, too, because you know it's like, it's not like the tournament when a bunch of people died in episode one. It was like, a person died. But a lot of things were happening around parts, that yeah. death. That's like it's moving the plot forward. It's 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 tense in its own right. Like it's not just Builds tense. Every single character that was involved in the episode. Yeah, it's like bringing all these plots together into one location was really what stood out. Like you had Damon, you had Rhaenyra, you had Alicent, you had Corlys, you had Kristen, you had Viserys, all in the same room. The only guy that was missing was Otto. But man. Oh, that was. And tense. you know what? I really probably uh, probably brought my score up like a lot. Like I love the episode, and then on top of that, it gives us a direction to where we're leading. You know, whereas like a lot, of, um, some of the first episodes are like to set up the characters and like what they their motivations are for why they act a certain way. But this one is like this is the grand scheme of everything. Yeah, like the first and couple this is episodes, where we're going. they were setting things up. We gave them like eights out of tens, but this one we like. We stood up out of our chairs, like we were like, "Oh, hands on our heads, like my are you seeing God!" This? Yeah, so I I like the direction that they're going. Um, my thoughts for next episode are they're going to open with the funeral, and then we're going to get the time jump. I think that this is the time where you jump and you show maybe, uh, like how the civil war has played out, and like where now where the older characters are. So I don't think there's going to be any open war, though. No, no, no. But you think politically they'll be still aligning themselves? Yeah, and like maybe Rhaenyra and, and Laenor are on Driftmark, or they're on Dragonstone, right? And we get two well, no, they separate would be, locations. They would be in King's Landing, right? Because she's going to be... If heir, it opens with oh. the funeral, she's heir, so she's got to be ruling. So where does that put Alicent is my question. Because she distanced herself from Rhaenyra this episode, especially when she said stepdaughter. Yeah, so what happens to the queen when the heir is the princess? I don't know. Maybe she goes back to Old Town and is gathering That's some where strength. she starts... Oh, okay. I would love to see Old Town, by the way. I know they showed it a bit in the Game of Thrones series, but I think that's one of the cooler locations in the books that we haven't seen too much of. And uh, I look forward... Hopefully they show All right, us some so the official Just Our Thoughts prediction for the next episode is King's Funeral. Coronation, I think, is going to follow it. Coronation, Time Jump, Alice in Old Town, Rhaenyra, King's Landing, where the piece has fallen. Yes. And a lot of stuff happening in between. Lots of scheming, lots of plots, lots of uh, people with their own motivations Everything we love about it. And of course, a couple of dragons thrown in there for good measure. Man, I, d I can't believe it's seven days away. I'm like, I'm ready to watch it right now. All right. So these are just our thoughts on House of the Dragon season one, episode five. If you have anything you would like to add or discuss with us, leave a comment. We'll bring it up in the next discussion. Um, if you like the video... Give us a like, and if you want to see more, give it, uh, hit the subscribe button, and we will you know, keep talking about the show. we got other videos on the way, so stay tuned.